Hi guys. Good day or good evening. Good night wherever you are. Hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here for another episode of Push Talk with myself, your push friend, just us as to say. This podcast is all about pushing you towards your purpose in business, career, and beyond. And you guys will see I'm in a different setting today. We're all in this work from home life and um, Ansari's with me. Hey, Ansari, my guest today. Super excited to have you. Um, we're at home, so forgive us. I'm not in my office as usual, but hey, we'll work with it, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so happy this episode is one that I'm super thrilled about, and you'll know shortly why. But before I get into the episode and what we'll be discussing today, I want to um, let you guys all know Push Talk Podcast is actually on Apple. Um, Apple Podcasts, but we have been going live lately and doing videos. It's been something that our audience have been interested in, so we're trying this out. So if you want to hear more great podcast episodes and topics like you're here today, make sure you subscribe on our Apple Podcast channel at Push Talks. Um, and of course, if you want to push towards your purpose, you can always find me at pushstrategist.com. So Today, I'm with Ansari. Welcome again. We're Thank so you. glad to have you. Just so you guys know, I have, you know, I was uh, tardy today. And I always talk to my guests about not being tardy. I was too bu busy <laughs> trying to make a, uh, a TikTok video and forgetting the time. So I'm um, sorry, forgive me, but she's just such a delight and was still so patient with me. So thank you in advance. Uh, um, you. Today, we will be um, discussing with Ansari a really topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and it is all about being an H4 visa holder here in the US. And we're gonna talk to Ansari about how to live and work in the US. Um, for most of you guys, if you're not aware, um, I did a great stint of time working with um, international professional candidates, bringing them to work and live in the US through visa sponsorship. And that's what I do for my consulting business. I help push people not only in their businesses, but also in their careers. And being able to work with people around the world it's so exciting. I get to learn and not only just learning, but helping to support somebody and pushing out their career and doing what they're called is, is just so fulfilling. And um, I did that business for quite some time. And now I'm consulting, I'm doing that on an individual basis, as well as helping to get some companies to diversify their workforce through sponsorship. And then Sari is somebody who I just enjoy dearly. She's awesome. And she's going to talk to us about her story. And for those of you out there who have been considering wanting to live and work in the U.S., make sure you have a pen and paper handy because she's going to have a lot of great nuggets for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go uh, start off first before we um, jump in, just telling you about and sorry, and just who you're dealing with here. This is not an average woman, okay? She is all about her business and she's doing big things. So I have her bio, so I'm going to go ahead and read it and then we'll, and we'll go ahead and hear a little bit from her, of course. So Ms. Ansari has worked over 9.5 years in marketing and advertising experience, including seven years working in India and one year in Qatar. Recently, she immigrated to the U.S. Ms. Ansari works for ADM, um, Arasa, one of the largest... Oh, say it again. Admiratia. Admiratia. Sorry, you may have cut off on my paper here. One of the largest... Asian American advertising agencies in the US, where she specializes in helping international businesses bridge the culture gaps to create impactful communication for Asian Americans, for the Asian American market. In, in the past, and sorry, worked for international advertising agencies such as FCB, um, Wonderman Thompson, and her experience also extends as a client herself, steering multinational brands such as KFC. Okay, and if you ever heard of KFC, <laughs> you better get to one. <laughs> so, and sorry, welcome. You have such Thank great. You background and marketing. So you're not only going to tell us about your process, but give us some advice on how to market ourselves to get here. <laughs> okay. I don't need to give you any advice. You're doing a good job yourself. I need to take oh. lessons from you. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. As you see, I'm learning and growing. I'm just, I'm always a sponge ready. I'm humble enough to say I'm not perfect, but I'm definitely pushing towards my purpose right along with my listeners. So um, I'm always ready to learn from you too. Um, so let's start off, I'm sorry, with you telling us a little bit about your story. How did you even end up here? You know, what made you want to come to the United States? As much stuff is going on lately. <laughs> um, what, tell us a little bit about your journey and when you even came and, and how that whole process started. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, coming to US uh, was, was was me and my husband's dream. Like it was, I visited my cousin in 2012. Sorry. Yeah, so I visited my cousin in 2012 and I was in California. And I used to tell my cousin that, you know, I, I want to work here uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my dream. So he, 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 you know, he found this very amusing. He's like, what is this logic of 10 days? I'm like, I'm not so sure if I can ever, you know, immigrate here permanently, but I'll be happy if I've just worked and earned some dollars for 10 days. And then I'll be like, okay, one, one more, uh, you know, list of checklist mm -hmm. of. But for my husband, Javed, uh, the dream has been uh, far longer and far more sincere. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I think sincerity is what has led us to uh, this country more than my wish list. So, yeah, I think uh, between uh, his dreams that started in, I think, 2010 and my wish in 2012, somewhere around 2018, we were able to realize the dream eventually so it, it's been a long journey but yeah i think uh, i would say it we really started to you know see it through and you know getting it getting into the thick of things i think somewhere around 2017 is uh, and now and tell us i never get to have you tell us where it's home for you where where did you journey from and to where you started the dream yeah, so I have, I'm a Delhi girl. So Delhi is the capital of India and I've been born and brought up in Delhi. I have worked there for the most part of my life. In fact, I think when I moved to Qatar for a year long assignment, that was the first time I ever, you know, really stepped out of the country in a, you know, in a, in a, from a more permanent way. So I have been always there and, uh, I think, um, I, you know, when I was studying my graduation, I was doing chemistry honors and I always had this plan where I'll get into some pharma company and I'll do some management. And then somehow I ended up doing an internship at Ogilvy. And after that, my entire you know world changed. And I was like, hey, I found my calling. I'm not going anywhere. This is what uh -huh. I'm going to do. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's. I think it's at least 10 years back, I would say, more than wow. 11 years back. Yeah. Well, and I'll have to say, I mean, um, Javin and his wife are like family to me. Um, I was had the honor of being able to work with them on their transition here. And um, yeah. it, it's so good to know because we met in probably, what, 2017, was it? I think and, it was, yeah, 17. Yeah, 17. Yeah, 2017 or 18. And to think that, you know, you guys started on this journey in 2010 goes to show that it's not a short process. I mean, you have to really um, be ready to kind of work towards this for a while. And like you said, start off with your husband and then you kind of said, you know, this would be something good. So like, what were your thoughts? Like, even before, you know, you came to the U.S., did you, well, like, what did you think about it? Um, and why did you say, you know, I would love to explore and just try a scent of work here? Yeah. So I have, uh, I have pretty much grown up watching uh, How I Met Your Mother and Friends reruns and everything <laughs> between Grey's Anatomy, you name it, and I have seen it, I think, at least three or four times. So my, uh, my, my worldview and my perception about America has, you know, how everyone looks up to it. It's a, it's a developed country. There are better opportunities. There's more success, especially the fact that 
so many talented people in india uh, you know are getting amazing opportunities and they're making a name for them for themselves in this country mm-hmm. has always always been like one of the you know most powerful reasons as to why i would ever want to be here and yeah i think uh, that was that was basically the uh, you know the motivation to uh, even like my particular field advertising and marketing i mean us the headquarters all the all the biggest agencies and all the biggest companies in the world have uh, have have a headquarter here so it's like everything started from here so you'd want to you know visit the church the bible you you'd want to read it it's like that so yeah. wow well, you know it 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 speaks so much volumes to sometimes what we take for granted those that Absolutely. are born here and live here like they're I'm first generation here. My family is from West Africa and just knowing what so many people go through to just have an opportunity. Um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's a blessing to yes. so many people that don't realize like not that where you came from is a, a bad place and, you know, you can progress and have a life there, but it's just the opportunity, like you said, to be able to learn and grow at, a, at marketing agencies that are the biggest, you know, it's like you have those big dreams. Like I want to be this big exec, and in where you where you're at, sometimes you don't have access to that. So just getting the the, the to meet your dreams, call for coming here, and there's so many industries that the U.S. really are ahead in that um, people take for granted. So you know, I just have to say that because I I can only understand and know um, what it was when you finally got that opportunity to just be able to grow in your career. So, so you started the journey 2010 um, and then you you're, you worked with your husband to be able to achieve this process. So tell us, um, how was it like when you finally got on that journey and or at least that you saw him on the journey or you guys did it together. What was that like? Because there's so many people who are like, oh, yes, I want to get a visa or I want to come and work here. And they think it's just one, two, three. Tell us some <laughs> of the pain points so people get why it's important to work with somebody like myself who can make that process easier. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think, I mean, even before I answer that, uh, I mean, it goes without saying how how incredibly important it is to have someone guide you through the process because uh a first of all uh, when we when you know actually when my husband he's an occupational therapist and when he actually cleared it cleared his exam that's when the things started you know really getting serious because uh he he requires licenses etc cetera, etc cetera, to be able to get a h1b and uh, once he cleared his exam in 2016 that's when it all started and uh, to be honest osi and i have said this like i don't know a million times to you to everyone who knows you or who doesn't know you that i mean if it was not you who you know sort of uh, took us through the process and the process it you know on one side you you expect it to be as streamlined and as easy and as simple you know it's step 1 2 3 but once you actually get into it and it really starts to get serious that's when you get to know the you know the challenges and uh, you know with 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 javed's visa process it i think it took almost a year and a half or i would say almost two years before, from you know from being eligible to file or from the time you guys filed the h1b to us actually setting foot in this country mm-hmm. and uh, i think the biggest uh, biggest i would say learning challenge or the biggest value virtue that we earned in the spirit was patience because the paperwork is it, it seems simple but it isn't the response time you'd expect you know i jokingly always say that you know us is a country it's a country of inventors it's a country of everything better shinier faster speedier and when it comes to government processes Oh yeah. my god. It's it's exactly how any country's government process is going to be. So, uh, yes, yeah, you you would expect a lot of efficiency and everything else, but because I think uh, I mean to be fair on the part of the government, it's because of the volume, the the amount of paperwork and people and applicants they are sort of handling, you can only imagine how much time it is going to take. So, I would just say that, you know, 
uh, your your you know each case dif is different uh, it, it and you, you all you may you may face you may not face challenges i mean but at the end of the day i think patience is a virtue and when when i say patience and i say uh, it can take longer it's not a it's not in the sense that i you know i'd want to demotivate you but what i want to say is that uh, you know keep at it don't lose the steam because uh, there were there were times where we were absolutely you know we left we, in a in the sense we left the hope and uh, we were javed and i we were having conversations that javed we can't just hold our life just because one day we might just get a chance to you know uh, go to us and actually in fact that that was a point where i started looking out back in india and i did get a consulting gig, gig with kfc and i was i was blessed i was happy that was one of the best opportunities i got but yeah i mean that actually it that that job stemmed out of uncertainty and we were almost losing hope wow. so yeah that that's i think one of the biggest challenges or the learnings i would say in the process oh so good you know i love the advice you gave patience yeah and like you said so many things we want to happen overnight but it's the character you build in the process of all that and i'll have to say you know working with you and javed were, was also such a great learning for me on patience too because i'm like <laughs> Gosh, what's going on? Why is this taking long? And no matter how many times you've been through it, it just still, um, it, it it just always feels like, why do we have to go through this? And I would have to say, honestly speaking, sometimes I feel like these um, delays are intentional, you know, to try to um, slow down the whole process to have people give up. Like a lot of things in life, sometimes it just seems like the delays are just put there, those robots, but those people who persevere like you guys did through it, make it and yeah. it's not easy you know but look at what you said happened you end up getting the opportunity with kfc and Absolutely. it even probably helped you open doors for where you are now you know because yeah you to do that um at, at such an international level like you did i mean that's huge so um i would have to say you guys is tenacity and just pushing through and i just felt like every time i was like okay this i have <laughs> news you good or bad it was always a level of optimism and I, and i'm a huge believer on speaking things and, and having faith and just pressing through and not giving up no matter how long it takes it will manifest and it did for you guys yes. and i'm happy um and I'm, I'm happy that we're able to just be transparent with our listeners like this is not an overnight process yes it's not a cheap process because mm -hmm. i know you, it's a lot you guys had to you know you mentioned his exams so before he even could start, it's, it, you're, you're pretty much saying there was a lot of pre-work that he had to yes. do. Um, and I'm sure those exams cost and those processes cost. So, um, you know, it's just, you have to be prepared from all those levels, I'm sure, right? Yes, absolutely. You, you, you know, you're right. And I mean, uh, I, 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 again, I want to be transparent myself. Like my husband, he says it. I mean, it's not like the, in the first attempt, you're probably going to crack the exam. And it's okay if it, you've cracked it in the second or the third, but uh, if you have, it has both you know time and monetary implications as well. So you really, unless and until you are really mentally prepared to you know, it's all in. Like it's you know, unless you have that you know willpower in you, uh, it's it it'll feel more difficult than it is. So with with Chavez, it was like that. With me, even like. Uh, I personally, you know, despite having a great opportunity at KFC, even like for us, for both of us, we thought alike and we, you know, we said that if we don't do this now, like, yes, we have a great life here. We have a home. We don't have to pay rent. We have fat salaries. We have amazing jobs and we are closer to our parents. Everything is just so perfect. But, but that, you know, that, but, so it's like, I know that do this, if you don't know this now, yeah. you're probably going to regret it 30 years down the line that yeah. maybe our lives would have been different. So yeah. we didn't want to, I honestly, I personally didn't want to live with that regret or think that this might be, we might regret it later. So we said it's it's all in, like, uh, let's, let's go it. for it. I love it. All in. You got to be all in. Don't straddle a fence. Just do yeah. it. 
The yeah. worst that can happen is it's a no. And you, like you said, you had a good life and things were going well. This is just more of an opportunity for you guys to pr- advance your career, get some experiences. Um, and I think that is just amazing. And now I want to just touch on the fact that you had to leave so much behind. <laughs> How was that? You know, you were doing well. You had this great career. How was that? And what happened when you got here? Because now you're an H-4 visa holder. And for our listeners, if you want more, you know, just understanding of the visa process, it's, it's, you, there's certain careers, we talked about exams, um, there's certain careers where you're even eligible to come. And in those careers, sometimes, most times you have to take an exam to, you know, even um, operate as a clinician as Java did. And then, you know, there's visa types and I don't want, we don't want to confuse you all. So like I said, reach out to me, pushstrategist.com and we'll, and I'll hook you up. But, <laughs> but how was it um, as an H4? Because H-4 visas for our listeners are dependent visas. So yeah. uh, her husband came on the H-1B. Um, so he has um, authorization to work. And then she had an H-4. And for H-4 status, sometimes you can't work. You know, you have to get that authorization. Um, and so how was that in the beginning for you, knowing you're leaving your success behind to create this opportunity that can help you in the long term. Like, what was that like? Because you were a very professional woman doing excellent in your career field. Uh, I would say it was it was a mix of both. And uh, I'd been, uh, I mean, we keep, I still keep, you know, looking at my stint at KFC as that, you know, one true love that I had to leave behind. <laughs> I know, it's hard, isn't it? For us yeah. women, it's so hard. Like we just, you, it, it's hard enough for us to get into that opportunity. And then a lot of times as um, mothers or it's just women, we have to sacrifice, you know, not to say guys, you don't, but we really have to sacrifice. It's not easy. So yeah. I know that was hard. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was honestly like before I, uh, you know, before I actually landed the the stitcher, the stint at KFC, I was, we, we both were mentally prepared, but things were getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And then eventually I uh, got this job and this job was uh, like, I would say disproportionately amazing. Like I had the best boss, I had the best opportunity, I had the best stage. I was given the you know the charge to basically launch Colonel Sanders in India. That was something wow. never done. So it was like everything was just so perfect. But at the same time, there was this thing which was America, and yeah. <laughs> in the, that you know that the dream that we kept living. But hey, I have this nice shiny. KFC job, which, you know, which is perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, again, because uh, I, I personally believe uh, taking the right decision is can be hard, but you got to take it. And it, in my life and personally to me, it has always paid off. And that's exactly what we did. So I did work till the last day. I mean, three days till I think till about I, if we were flying out, I think on Tuesday, I was working till Friday. I mean, I was wow. like, I just didn't want to leave. I was like, can I, can I just one more day and one more day? I was doing that. Mm-hmm. But yes, uh, I think uh, it was more than just leaving KFC. I think it was also the fear of what am I going to do? Uh, and uh, yes, you you know, you reason with everything. You you know, you, we, we decided that, okay. By, I'll take up a, you know, I'll I'll study for that time, and I had made up my mind, and it was all perfect. And I we moved here a couple of months, settling in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, I mean, I when I had prepared myself mentally, that's where the surprise came from OC and our lawyer Ron, yes. and we we got to know that you guys did something which is amazing and uh, unexpected, and I was like it's just god's like god's grace on me and that i'm always blessed with angels so uh like for the listeners basically uh Osi helped uh filing uh, javed's green card way 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 earlier than i would say anyone would ever get it so suddenly i saw that there is a hope that uh i can work sooner than later and that's when i was like okay it's fine. Education, we can put on hold because we are poor right now. Everything's 
thousand dollars. Yes, let's just the point to the process is like just to get here. You're yes. just over, you know. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I I think that was the that was the straw that I was holding on to. Uh, although, yes, you already know how much time it took because of the uh, the political scenario behind EAD and all of that. Uh, but yeah, I eventually did get the EAD and uh, <laughs> we were like, literally, I, I, I remember, you know, calling up the uh, Ron, our lawyer saying, hey, I'm going to buy the most expensive courier service and you're, you're going to use that to send the EAD card. Do not even think of USPS and <laughs> give me the tracking number and I'm just going to stand at the door and wait for the moon man to come. So <laughs> it was like that. Like it's and, like and a, it's I, like a golden ticket, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. It was. It was. I think it was like waiting for two years to uh, get back on track. But yes, I would just say I've only just got started. It's been only a year working with Admiratia and already learning a lot. Uh, now that I look back, it's worth it. Oh, awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Clap, clap, clap. I'm happy it's worth it because even, you know, there was t- a time where we didn't know and we didn't know you were yeah. going to get the work authorization. Um, It was definitely a push to try to get that. Um, But you got it. Yeah. But even between it, you really took a risk because you would have had to be the housewife of New York City, like the show, you know, and, but, you know, except for real life, not reality TV show yeah. with you know, these, you know, lavish lives, lavish lives as housewives. But, you know, it, it would have been hard, like really laying it down. Yeah. But the fact that you did it, you were all in, look at how quickly things turned around and you were able to get a great um, job at a great company. And I was so excited because, well, you know, you had to still look and, you know, it, it there was delays, but when you yeah. told me you got your job and it was such a great job, I'm like, this girl doesn't play. Like she, you know, I've seen people come and even get work authorization and take them some, some time to just kind of get acclimated to the culture and taking a train and you know not be fearful of the uh, panhandlers or <laughs> in, in New York because we know how it is. Or yeah. guys trying to hit on you on the train, all these crazy things that happen. But you know, you came and you just jumped right in. So I was really excited to see that. And you have such a great story because you guys are great people, and great things happen when you put when you're all in. You know, um, so I'm excited to hear that. And so now you got here, you got your job. But what was your biggest shock? I always like to hear the funny stories of like what shocked you because. As somebody who is first generation, I see people come like from back home and move here and they're like, oh, I need to go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac or all those things you, you know, those, you know, so-called um, U.S. things. Like what was your biggest shock? What was your biggest excitement just coming here to see? OK, <laughs> I would say the the shock uh, was uh, it's funny, uh, was laundry. Laundry. <laughs> I never realized the importance of having, uh, you know, a washer dryer at home because oh, since yeah. childhood, since childhood, I, we used to just throw clothes in the machine and and clean clothes used to come out. So we never really respected that <laughs> humble device. And when we moved here, we were, I mean, we could only barely afford a studio at that point and mm-hmm. <laughs> it didn't have a washer dryer. The building did not have washer dryer and we never even thought of checking it because <laughs> it does not occur to you that you, you're you supposed to have a lot, you know, washer dryer. And I remember for the first couple of months when I used to take the laundry bag in that cart and I used to push it till the, you know, the, the, the la- laundromat. Yeah. I was like, that day, Javed used to... S- stay quite away from me because I used to be like, <laughs> I can do everything. I, I I can leave my job for you. I can do this laundry. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was hilarious. Like now we look back and we laugh over it. And he's like, yeah. I, I mean, it was, it was just so funny and bizarre. It was so difficult. Like, I know it's a silly thing, but I was like, so people oh, do this yeah. every day or every week. They take their clothes and I, and it's like yeah. the next apartment that we were searching for. I was like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying yes. <laughs> if you ever have a washer dryer, I'm going back home. Okay, Absolutely. look. You know, 
Carrie, let me tell you, that was one of the things. I'm like, look, New York, love New York and miss it dearly. But that hauling that laundry basket up and down, somebody moving your stuff out the washer. Absolutely. I, I, I can't hear you, Osi. I think. Oh, I think, oh, can you hear me yeah. now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, sorry. Um, just that whole process, like dragging yeah. uh, your stuff upstairs, people touching your stuff in the laundry, like that New York laundry mat life is, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not easy, especially, you know, and people think like abroad, like, and I know we hear this all the time, like money grows on trees and yeah. everything is amazing in America. <laughs> you know, no, you have to do oh. your own laundry because you yeah. you have more help back home yes. with those things than here. Cause here it's an arm and a leg and back home, you could still provide somebody a whole salary that will take care of everything. And it's like a quarter of the price. <laughs> You know, so. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're not just a, you you're not just living in U.S. as you as individuals, but you're a maid, you're a cook, you're a cleaner, yeah. you're a driver, <laughs> you're a washer, you are yeah. a plumber, you're everything. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. But then you you realize that okay, you thought that the grass was greener on the other side. Go back to yep. the dry part. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, like, how did you guys handle like just when you got here the first few years, you know, things have started to change a little bit with the administration change. How did you handle all that? Because a lot of, um, you know, candidates I've worked with or, you know, individuals who are abroad, they just were like, wow, like, this is not what we expected. We always looked at, you know, we for us here, we knew America has its, its flaws and its issues. We can't deny that. But what did that feel like just seeing a, you know, administration and um, just people look at immigra immigrants the way they did and talk about immigrants did, and the way they treated immigrants at the border detention? I mean, all these things we started to see come out. Um, it was tough. And I just yeah. want to like hear from your perspective. What was that like? You came here thinking this is a place of opportunity, a place where you can be able to grow in your career. And then you're hearing things on the news talking about immigrants and they want to, you know, take advantage and this and that. Share, can you share a little bit of your thoughts on, on that whole um, scenario? Yeah. Um, so I think one of the direct outcomes of that, uh, that, you know the, that fearful environment that was creative it was which is not you know quite fair for people who are working here was we haven't gone back home in three years now and is it's not to do with the fact that we did anything wrong or you know uh, or we just love america too much but it was it was the fear that there is disproportionate and unfair procedural you know i would say uh, wrongdoings is a wrong is, is is a bit of a harsh word but unfairly uh, suffering people were suffering so my uh, despite my husband being a healthcare professional he shared uh, numerous instances where people just you know qualified healthcare professionals went home just to get their visa stamped done and then they were there was those such you know such delays that the employer eventually had to say hey i can't support your application any longer so there were a lot of challenges and uh, i to be very honest with you uh, i think uh, until until the election day I, we were there was no certainty what the next who the next administration head is going to be and uh, I, I told you, like, uh, you know, uh, we were actively uh, processing our, you know, uh, uh, visa documentation for Canada because, I mean, there is, you know, if you're young, if you're young, 20 years old, you can li live with this uncertainty for longer. Uh, but yeah. me, both me and Javed, we are at a life stage where we want more stability. Like, we are like, dwellers we want to put roots we want to buy a house we want to have you know a family and it's it's that's how we see you know life yeah. and living in this uncertainty and almost feeling like you are jailed here like you can you can't like of course our parents came here we call them but then you know not wanting to go back home and not being able to feel more restrictive so yeah. it was a lot of mental toll, a lot of mental toll. And wow. Uh, wow. I mean, for us, then, it, you know, our after we came to U.S., the I think just two months later, our visa got extended to three years. So that there and then we had decided for the next three years until our visa is valid. Let's not risk it. Let's not because 
yeah. it's not like you can just go back home and even if you get stuck some everything will be taken care of the rents here are <laughs> you need a, a us salary to yes. pay the rent <laughs> like that right yeah. so it was it was very challenging i would say oh, wow. and and then covid on top of it you know <laughs> then we're dealing with this world pandemic it oh. just it was a lot you know you guys came at a a good time in a sense to um move forward in your career you know the the field your husband was in there we definitely are so thankful for him coming and bringing his skill set here because there's a deficit in that field or he wouldn't be here and i just want to touch on that quickly because people think oh when um foreigners come on work visas they're taking our jobs they're oh. here to take re resources no they're coming to fill it, job um, titles that are hard to fill here. It, it's a whole process. Like we have to ensure that there's no U.S. worker that's going to take that job. And I'm not an attorney, but I work with an attorney, and we have to make sure that that you know the attorney and um, myself would do all this research to ensure and make sure that the we have to take precedence to U.S. workers before we even are able to say let's put them in a you know bucket for a visa. So people don't realize the asset and the way that this program helps to diversify workforce forces in a time where we see you know people of color have a hard time reaching some of those heights that we see our counterparts so th this program is definitely you know it's a great program and it's helping this country so to see you know all you've had to go through to get here what i hear people all the time have to go through some of the the barriers of entry that are so hard. It's why I have such a passion behind it, you know? And people tell me, they're like, wow, you you know, that's such a tough um, role to be in or to consult in, because it's just not certain. But I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm really big on standing for things that help to bridge the gap for others and close gaps like um, what we see when it comes to the um, differences for people of color versus versus our ca Caucasian um, counterparts. And if I see something that helps to give opportunities to everyone, I'm, I don't care how risky it is. I put my faith, I'm all in like you guys were. And I'm like, I'm all in. I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually things will turn around and it's exciting now after all you guys encountered, hopefully this new administration will, you know, follow through, <laughs> you know, on yes, what we have been reading and seeing and what they want to do. We know it's not going to be overnight, no. but my hope is that things will change, you know, for the better. So yes. um, now I'm going to have to use some of your marketing skill sets. <laughs> I want to um, just have you touch on what okay, I'm a person who's in India or in China or t Taiwan or wherever. How, what's the best way to market myself or to start, you know, um, getting involved in things, even in my home country to um, make me look like an asset? Because um, your husband had to look the part before I even said, oh, I want to, he put in work prior. So by the time I connected with him, I said, wow, his resume, he has experience here. He's so well-spoken. He, you know, he's, you know, he's just really knowledgeable in his feet. Like, tell us what you would say as a marketing expert as you are. How could we position ourselves as somebody abroad wanting to come and get this experience? So, yeah, I think uh, I think the most important aspect is and this personally, I believe, is that you got to focus on the role and the company both. So today, uh, you know, the credibility that my CV or Javed CV carries, it carries the, the credibility of companies who've been in the market for centuries, at least a century, I would say. And. Uh, and that, in a way, really adds more value to, you know, uh, to what you have earned in terms of experience. And I would say that I think the other thing, which especially now this pandemic has, in a way, uh, empowered all of us is uh, education. And if you have, I mean, the more U.S. certified, uh, you know, education courses, like if you're interested in digital marketing, if you're interested in your relevant course i think doing some sort of a certification even while you're in your job would definitely help because uh, at the end of the day uh, even when you know although h1b is a lottery but eventually you know the recruiters such as you coach you know uh, you you i mean you are sifting through hundreds and thousands of cvs 
And if you're not even getting shortlisted, then you know, you're missing the opportunity. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is to in a way build a profile which is which shows both your pers you know, your 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 personality, your skills, your you know, capability, your eagerness to learn, which in a way makes it, you know, makes someone like a, you know, uh, I, in fact, sorry, in fact, today only we were talking to I was talking to someone in my family and she was giving me example of her sister, how she was given an IT project, uh, which which she had no knowledge back home. And so instead of her saying, hey, hey, I, you know, I don't know this. So, I mean, and the boss would have very easily said, OK, yeah, it's not areas of, if it's not your area of expertise. But what she instead did was she learned the subject matter. She applied that to the project and then she submitted the project. And in a way, you know, I mean, you won't believe it, but the her, her superiors were so happy that she might just get an L1 visa and she might just move to Florida. Oh, so wow. yeah, it's, it's wow. like, yeah, I was shocked. I was I heard it and I was like, this is this is what, you know, employers are looking for. So you might just, you know, H1B might seem really difficult, but if you're really good and you're you're at a you're working with a multinational company you might just get an opportunity to get an internal transfer. So just have to be at it and, you know, whatever you're doing, just do it with passion, I would say. Oh, such good advice. I'm so happy. A lot of what you um, mentioned is I'm putting together a webinar on how to live and work in the U.S. that I'm offering to candidates um, just to kind of prepare themselves. Like, what do you need? And just steps like what or things like what you said, you know, just really setting yourself apart. And I'll tell you, Java did an excellent job at that. And just the example you gave, um, she went above and beyond. Like, I think sometimes we want things done, but when you look at the CV or you look at the work, it's just subpar. And it's like, you can't expect for somebody to bend backwards because employers have to bend backwards too. They have to pay to, um, you know, file for somebody and it's a lottery. And sometimes if they don't make the lottery, then they lose money because they pay legal fees. And it, you know, it's a whole investment. So, you know, some employers are hesitant on it. Um, and that's what my job is to try to help walk them through and tell them, don't be hesitant. Let me show you that this is worth it. Um, but, you know, I get the hesitancy, you know, so yes. the fact they want to make sure they're getting somebody who will really be able to go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, this is why we're talking today because you and your husband are really big on going above and beyond. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is this is going so great. We're almost at the end. And because my podcast is about pushing people towards their purpose, um, and I want to just have you answer, like, what's one way that you continue to push yourself daily in your job, in your life? Like, give us a tip. Like, what keeps you going? So there's always this big picture in my head. I am. I know where I want to be. I know where I see myself five years down the line or ten years down the line, and uh, I work for that. So it's almost like uh, you know you're basically trying to piece different pieces of the puzzle together, but you'll not see the full picture unless you arrive there. So I'm. I'm basically right now. Say for example, I'm actively looking at taking up a master's in psychology. Oh, now, I mean, uh, I, I, I was talking to my father and he was like, why do you want to do psychology? Why don't you do another MBA? I said, no, psychology is not just my subject matter, but this is something that is eventually going to expand my scope. But at the end of the day, help in, you know, helping me advance my career. And if that requires more time, more dedication, a little bit of more financial investment, it's eventually going to pay off. So I think keep the big picture in mind is something that, you know, keeps me motivated all the time and I don't lose it. And the moment you lose that, that's when the motiv demotivation say, seeps in and, you know, you you end up going in five different directions, but not really, you know, aiming towards a goal. So, yeah. I love that. I'm sorry. So good. 
keep keep go, going big. You don't settle for less, girl. And that's why I love you. <laughs> so I I mean, you have to come back. You have to join me on one of those webinars so you can speak to those and share more. And I want to just um, let people know where they can find you. There may be out there people out there who need a marketing person to give them some tips and um, support or, or just want to say thank you. So where can we find you? Where can we find you next? Um, please share with us. Yes, so I am. Uh, you can write to me at my uh, my email ID is arshi at arshiansari dot in. Uh, you can reach out to me on your social media handle. It's uh, uh, it's Zilch Life. If you type it on LinkedIn or Instagram, uh, just or or you know what the easiest and the fastest and the best most efficient way, reach out to OC. <laughs> And I think most of the queries she'll be able to handle. But if you still are not satisfied, then maybe, yeah, maybe I can help you, help you a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, please definitely reach out to me. And I'll put your your at Zilch Life up there too as well for those interested. But I'm always connected to you. And I feel like I will be for life because yes, you guys please. are my family. And I just it, it makes me so happy to see what um, perseverance it motivates me, you know, when I feel like, oh, I got to keep going. It's going to, the big break is here or, it's, you know, I just keep going. I think of you guys and I'm like, look at all they went through. Um, it's not impossible. Just keep believing, keep pushing forward, keep doing your best to be your best self. And um, it always works out in the end, you know? So thank you. Uh, this was so great. I really, really appreciate your time. Like I said, listeners, this is just a small little sample of some great nuggets that are available to you. Make sure, again, you check us out on Push Talk Podcast on Apple podcast make sure you subscribe subscribe here on youtube if you're watching this on youtube at push strategist and there's tons of other videos so make sure you check it out and hit me up hit me up info at pushstrategist.com or pushstrategist.com let me start helping you push towards your purpose and business career and beyond so thank you and sorry again and i look pleasure. forward to having you back on we'll be connecting again very soon pleasure is all mine Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys.